All right. Uh, welcome to Rinkus Hines this afternoon. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there was a, a little scheduling snafu. Uh, David's not going to be here doing the uh, IC stuff. I'm going to do a little presentation on subwoofer alignment with a full range system. Do you not hear me? Well, get the banana out of your ear. Check one, two. Is that any better? Straight up. Straight up is good. Trust me. It'll be nice. Okay. Now it's killing me. All right. <laughs> Uh, for aligning a subwoofer and full range system, one of the first things we need to know is where exactly, or I guess when exactly, is the energy arriving uh, from uh, the subwoofer system. It's pretty easy to tell when it's coming from the full range, but not from the subwoofer. Uh, so to investigate this a little bit, we're going to look at a, a, a perfect impulse response, uh, which you're showing right here, and we're going to apply uh, some low pass and high pass filters to those, uh, similar to the response of uh, a loudspeaker. You can model that with a filter. Um, this is uh, what the filters would look like in the frequency domain, and we're showing uh, one kilohertz filters here to begin with. Uh, we'll slide down and look at very low frequency stuff in a little while. Um, and you can see here's what the impulse response looks like in the time domain. Uh, very pronounced peak uh, for the high pass filter, but the low pass filter seems to be a little bit spread out in time. Uh, next slide is going to show it zoomed in in magnitude quite a bit, and you can now see a lot more detail. Now, since we uh, had our initial impulse and we just applied some filters to it, the initial arrival time is still at T equals zero. There's, there's been no delay of uh, either one of these things. So the initial arrival of both the high pass and the low pass is right here at T equals zero. And that's contrasted rather vividly by the uh, peak energy arrival, which happens about half a millisecond later for the low pass. Um, so the key here is you want to look at the initial arrival energy from subwoofers, which is right here, and align to that. Uh, not aligned to the peak energy arrival. If we sum those two impulse responses, uh, this is what we get uh, in the time domain. In the frequency domain, it's just flat magnitude response, uh, and we see the phase shift uh, normal that we would get from uh, some fourth order liquids Riley filters. Now, just for grins, uh, we've delayed the high pass filter uh, to be coincident with the peak energy arrival from the low pass. To do this, we applied uh, just under half a millisecond of delay to the high pass signal. And when you sum those two, you get a huge notch right at crossover. Uh, so this should be very clear that you do not want to align uh, the peak energy arrival of the two. If you think about it, it really does make sense why this occurs. You've delayed the high pass signal by almost half a millisecond. At uh, one kilohertz, half a millisecond uh, represents about 180 degrees of phase shift. So we put the two signals uh, almost directly out of phase at crossover, and we get the, the big notch there as a result. Uh, now we're going to slide down to 100 hertz. Uh, still, the uh, high pass has a very defined uh, peak, but it's very hard to see the, the low pass response at all in the, the time domain. We've zoomed in between the purple markers here in the, in the bottom graph, and you can, can see a little bit more detail there. Uh, and again, the initial arrival of energy is here right at T equals zero. Uh, it may be a little hard to tell exactly when it's coming up from, from zero level, but uh, certainly somewhere uh, in this zero to one millisecond range would put you in a lot better shape than putting it here at uh, four and a half milliseconds. Now, when we actually start measuring subwoofer systems and trying to discern exactly when the initial energy arrival is occurring, you'll get much better results if you allow as much high frequency energy output from the subs as possible. Uh, turn off any uh, low pass filters uh, if possible or put them to a very high frequency to allow as much HF out of the subs as possible. Uh, of course, you know, once you get every, uh, all your delays set, you put them back in uh, and everything will still work properly. Uh, it's, you can think about it kind of like uh, sample rates. The higher frequency sample rates you use, the, the more time resolution you get. Uh, if you limit yourself to 100 hertz, you only have 10 milliseconds resolution. It's really hard to see when something is occurring with, with that coarse uh, resolution. Uh, and this is shown somewhat graphically over here. You've got uh, uh, a little less than quarter wavelength of a 100 hertz sine wave, a 1K sine wave, and then some, a lot of uh, cycles of a 20 kilohertz sine wave. And you can see also how the, uh, the higher frequency components have a much faster rise time uh, in the time domain. And this also contributes to, to what we'll see in just a minute. When we pull out all those high frequency components, 
that's what's responsible for this apparent gap in the uh, energy arrival for the low pass filter. It's, it's not that there's a, a, a broadband time delay occurring pushing that low pass out. It's that their high frequency components are actually missing. Uh, if they were there, uh, they'd fill in that area and show you quite clearly where the uh, initial arrival of energy would be coming from. So let's set some, uh, some time arrival goals for our system when we want to align them. Uh, naturally, we want the energy from adjacent passbands uh, to arrive at the listener at the same time or as close as possible. Um, there are several different scenarios used uh, today, all ground stack systems, but there are uh, various drawbacks for that, uh, most notably coverage. You can have an all-flown system, which works very well, but sometimes it's not practical to do that uh, for flying subs. Uh, we're going to look at a flown full range system and ground stack subs. Uh, we're going to do that for two reasons. One, it's probably the most commonly seen configuration in use today, and it also represents the worst case for timing differences. So it's a, a good uh, illustrative case for us. We're also going to set as a criterion, we want less than uh, 2 dB of variation through the crossover region uh, when we are, uh, are finished with our alignment. To achieve that variation, uh, the adjacent passbands can't be out of phase by more than 75 degrees. Now for a 100 hertz crossover, that 75 degrees uh, corresponds to about two milliseconds of time offset. So as long as we keep everything to within two milliseconds of uh, misalignment, we'll get no more than a two dB variation through crossover between our subs and our full range system. So we're going to look at an example system in a non-reflective room. We're just looking at direct field sound, uh, nothing else. You see we've got an eight box line array system here and three ground stack subs. Um, and what I've done here is uh, construct a map in ease looking at the difference in arrival times between the sub and the full range system. Uh, this can be very instructive to do and, and get you in the ballpark a lot more quickly in setting up your systems. Uh, you can see that for most of the audience area, you're about f uh, between four milliseconds and uh, eight, nine, maybe 10 milliseconds out for uh, most of the audience area. Now there's a couple of methods you can uh, employ to, to get your uh, delays set up. One is to, to start at the back and work forward. At the rear of the hall, you're gonna have your, your shortest time arrival difference between the two systems. So we'll use uh, that figure plus about uh, our two milliseconds that we wanna be within and uh, apply that delay to the subs. Uh, so for this, that'll uh, delay the subs about six milliseconds, and now we'll look at the, uh, the new energy time arrival differences. In this area, we're in exact alignment. Uh, as we move forward, we go out of alignment, and as we move backwards, we go out of alignment. So you can see here that we've taken our two millisecond variation that we set as our criterion, and we've actually got, uh, we've turned it into a plus or minus two millisecond variation. So now we've got a total of four millisecond variation to keep us within our, our 2 dB window that we wanted to maintain. Uh, and now we're gonna look and see what that looks like as an SPL map. Uh, same audience coverage area. Here we've got the uh, flown array only, the full range array, and this is showing the coverage of the subs. Now no uh, crossover filters have been applied at this point yet. Um, but you can see in both cases you have very smooth, even coverage and a natural fall off towards the back of the, uh, the audience area, just like you'd expect. Now in this map we see the subs and the array with our fourth order Linkwitz Riley crossover filters at 100 hertz. And you can notice in the middle areas we've got a huge amount of cancellation. Uh, Compare this to this, we've got about 9 dB of cancellation due to the misalignment and about 6 dB here. And in fact, if you notice this area, we've got 81 dB there. From the subs only, you've got 92 dB that the subs are putting out. So from the misalignment in this area, you've got about 11 dB of cancellation. Uh, extremely less than ideal. So using the proposed alignment method by the delaying the subs six milliseconds, this is the coverage map that you have at uh, 100 hertz. And you can see that now you've got the smooth, even roll off to the back of the house, much more uniform coverage, uh, just like you'd expect. Uh, you can look at the frequency response at these various positions where I've denoted the SPL. You can see uh, in the crossover region, very even. Since you're uh, a lot closer to the subs than you are the full range system, uh, that's why the uh, level of the uh, subwoofer in the low frequency range is, is much more exaggerated. As you move back, you've, you've got very even coverage. Um, not, uh, not even a dB of variation in the crossover region, but still a little closer to the sub, so it's showing hotter. 
as you move back, uh, you're getting out of the region where you're at, we're at that zero millisecond uh, time arrival difference. So you've got about one dB of, uh, of difference there in the crossover region. As you move back, the differences get a little bit more. Uh, and you can see as they're, they're overlaid, uh, you get very smooth, even coverage. If you wanted to, you could address this uh, globally across the venue with an equalizer uh, to flatten it out here. It would just give you a little bit hotter signal uh, in the crossover region there. Um, so that's uh, the, the, the quick uh, alignment method for, for subs. You just got to know what you're looking for in the, uh, the time domain. And it's much easier to, to look for that in the time domain rather than looking at phase response or the group delay in the frequency domain. If you're doing FFTs and, and looking at the frequency domain, you've got to worry about reflections getting into your measurement that would corrupt the data. Uh, you can't put, um, you have to use long time windows to get that low frequency resolution, and you can't do that with short reflections. But if you keep everything in the time domain, all the reflections are happening way after uh, the initial arrival of energy that you're after. Uh, so it's really better to use time domain. Um, yeah, let me get back to this slide here showing the arrival time differences. Well, if, if you, um, you know, you could set up, if you did, didn't want to uh, actually uh, map this, you could measure it. Yeah, set a mic back here, see what your time delay is, uh, or your arrival difference in, in time delays, and use that uh, plus that two milliseconds that we use as our maximum variation. In the back of the hall, you'll have maximum variation. If you want to, you can have perfect alignment back here, uh, but then you'd go out of alignment as you move forward um, in this direction. And instead of having plus or minus two milliseconds, you're down to just plus two milliseconds or minus two milliseconds. If you have that exact alignment somewhere in the middle of the, uh, the coverage area, you get maximum benefit uh, and, and minimum uh, minimum difference in your frequency response when you start to sum. Well, actually, in this case, the sub arrival happens first because your, sub, your subs are on the deck and your, uh, your full range system's flown. So there's a greater path length difference from the uh, system in the air to any point on the ground than there is from the subs on the ground. So you're actually going to need to uh, delay your subs. Um, I've got a, another method shown in here. I didn't know how much time I'd have, but um, got a couple of minutes. Um, there's another method that you can use just to, to pick any place uh, that you want to. If you want to have your perfect alignment, say where you've got a five millisecond uh, difference initially, you can use that and then you'll delay by that uh, plus the two milliseconds. So you'll have to uh, delay the subs for that amount. And then you, you're in perfect alignment there. Uh, but you see at the back of the hall, you're only out one millisecond. Uh, where you'd be out two milliseconds is down here somewhere in, in the next room. So it doesn't do you any good. So you, you've sacrificed a little bit of that um, maximum area of, of maximum summation for choosing the area of exactly where you, you want the, uh, to be in perfect alignment. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, as you go back here, your, your subs are going to uh, be... Let me think about that for a second. Yeah, your, your subs are going to be arriving um, later here and earlier up on this side of, of that zero zone. Any other questions from anyone? Okay, thank you for your attention.